Welcome knitters, I'm excited to show you how to swatch for a Fair Isle project. We're going to be casting on for our, this next knit along on Monday, May 11th, next Monday. So today we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do a Fair Isle speed swatch, which will simulate knitting in the round without actually you having to knit a big cylinder. So the, the crofter's kep is the pattern we're going to be casting on next Monday. You can find the link to that down below. It's a free download through Shetland Wool Week's website. So what we're going to do today, though, is swatch. And before everybody goes, oh, I hate to swatch, it is not difficult and it is pretty enjoyable. And swatching with a Fair Isle project is particularly important because you get a chance to get familiar with how the colors are going to flow together, how things will blend and as well as your tension and your gauge to make sure that you're knitting the size hat you intend to for either yourself or the recipient. So you wanna be sure that it's all gonna work out. It's all gonna fit because knitting is fun, but it just takes time and you, you know, you wanna use your time wisely. So if you need some yarn, I have a affiliate link down below where you can buy kits for, for this particular pattern. So check that out if you need to. I'm using Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight that I got from Needlepoint Joint. This will be a six color hat, but don't worry, you're only using two colors at a time and I'll give you tips and tricks along the way to help you manage your yarn as we go. But today is all about the swatching. So the reason that we swatch though, again, is to make sure things will fit and to make sure that you have the appropriate number of stitches per inch so that the results are what you expect them to be. Now, you'll notice that the pattern designer, Wilma Malcolmson, rather than altering the number of cast on stitches and the chart repeats that you might do, she's altering the needle size so that you will have different stitches per inch depending on the size needle you use. So you definitely wanna swatch, unless you're okay with just knitting a hat and then finding a recipient for it later. I like to knit for the people I knit for. So particularly in my husband's case, this first hat I'm gonna make is for him. And he's a big guy, he's almost six foot four. And so I need to make sure that this is gonna fit his head appropriately and not be too tight so that it like, you know, creeps up and then boop, and then that's annoying, we don't want that. So I need to make sure that I have his head size and the appropriate number of stitches per inch that's gonna work for him. Before we get started swatching, I wanna express big gratitude to Laurel and Denise. Thanks so much for becoming new patrons. If you're interested in seeing what I offer for your monthly pledge, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together. And you can see what I'm offering for a small monthly pledge, which includes patron knit night and some other perks. So go over there and check it out after you watch this video. I'm starting my swatch and I've cast on 30 stitches. Now the chart that I'm using for my swatch is chart B and the chart itself is 24 stitches but I'm going to have some uh, three extra stitches on each end just for more background color and because uh, my stitches will be a little loose on the edges since I'm act not actually going to do um, well, you'll see why in just a moment. So because we want to simulate knitting in the round, I'm not going to do any purling. I'm just going to be knitting, but I don't want to knit a whole thing where I have to knit in the round. It takes too long. So all I'm going to do is after I cast on this, I have pushed all the stitches back to the right hand needle and I'm going to take my working yarn here and bring it across the back of my hand, you know, giving some slack and I want to make sure my stitches are spaced out so I don't cause any, um, you know, bunching or gapping because I'm just going to keep knitting. I'm going to bring this across the back. I usually do it about, you know, I splay out my hands like this and I, I, that's about the tension that I have. So we're just bringing those strands across the back like it's one giant float. And then I'm just going to keep knitting. So the edge stitches might be a little loose and that's totally fine. This is gonna feel really awkward. I'm just uh, pinning this down between my fingers so I can get some tension to get started. And then I'm just gonna knit row one with the background color, just like my chart shows. And then we're gonna do the same thing and bring that long, long working yarn float across the back to knit row two. And we're gonna carry on in this way, having a whole bunch of really long floats so that we can do this speed swatch and get a good accurate representation of what our gauge, our stitch gauge, and our row gauge is going to be so we know what size hat we're gonna knit. I like to save my swatches um, because we're actually going to block it and dry it, and then we'll know how the yarn behaves with what size needle you're using, so we'll know what gauge we're getting, 
we'll know what the colors look like together, particularly if you are using stash yarn and you're not using maybe one of the recommended kits or one of the examples that you've seen before, you can see how the colors are gonna blend and work together. So that's kind of cool, especially if you're picking something, you know, that, that, that you like from your own stash, you can see how it's gonna all work together before you knit the entire garment, whether this is a sweater or a hat, either one. Now this last stitch is super loose and that's totally fine. So again, I'm gonna take this whole thing to the other side I'm gonna bring my working yarn around the back like it's one big long float, okay, around the back of my hand. And I'm gonna, I like to kind of pin it down so I have some, and that's another reason it's important to have your stitches spaced out so that you're not causing any bunch and bunching or any weird tension with your long float, okay. Then I'm gonna go in and just keep knitting row two. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of slack there because I don't want to have any tension issues. I want this to be an accurate representation of a Fair Isle swatch. So I'll show you what we're going to do when we add colors in. We're just going to do it like we normally would. Now with my particular color palette, my second color that I'm adding in at the bottom of the first few rows of chart B is going to be very dark and hard, probably hard to see on video. It'll look great in the hat, but I'm probably going to go ahead and knit through this little first section and get to a color that will, you know, show up better on for your benefit on video. So I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I'm ready to begin a new color. And again, I'm just bringing this working yarn across the back, and I know this looks super messy, but it's okay, we'll straighten it all out later. I'm bringing that across the back and I'm being careful, really careful to space these out so I create enough. I mean, it's better to have a little more slack across the back than it is not enough, because you don't want any puckering going on, when, particularly when you go to measure your gauge. So, I, like I mentioned, I still have, I have three stitches extra to do here because I'm creating a little bit of a border before I add that extra color back in. All right, my new color is this lovely con contrasting rusty orange sort of color. And so I'm going to need to start that right now. So I'm just kind of pinning this down at the back and I'm just gonna begin knitting with it. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and weave it in um, with these first three stitches on your quote border. I could show you how to do that real quick. I'll just do it with two stitches and I, I just go in as if I'm gonna knit and I lay this contrasting color across my needle, but I'm not gonna knit with it. I'm just gonna lay it across the needle. Then I do my knits wrap and then I take it back. I take this back off and I pull my regular yarn through. So that just winds it around the back. You can see that. And then when I do my next, next stitch, it's going to kind of tack it down. So you can see that that float's going across. And when I do my next stitch, it pins it down. Now I'm going to work with that orangey color yarn and I'm going to knit two. I'm just following along with my chart. And you can see how I, I don't have a very good uh, technique really, but it works for me. I'm just using my left hand and and I just kind of wrap it around and I hold it on my ring finger. I'm not sure how I developed the habit of doing that, but it works for me. So you do what works for you, whether that's knitting, you know, in a continental style like this, and I am capable of doing that too. I'm just not very good at it. It just takes practice where you would go in and pick that off your finger like that, and that works. Or, if you prefer, you can drop this color and then just pick it up with your right hand when you're ready to use it. But do keep it on the left side of your work because what happens is you have your background color kind of on the top and you have your float of your pattern color on the bottom. And it does make a difference in how prominent those pattern colors will appear. So I can drop that and pick this one up and then drop this one and pick this up and it's coming across the bottom, meaning the bottom of the all the floats that are going on the in the back. So if I drop this, this yarn is going over the top of this one. I hope that makes sense. And then I'll knit with that, making sure I'm not messing up my pattern here. 
Then you drop that, pick this one up, and it's coming across the bottom. So that's your pattern color in your non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm using my pattern color in my left hand. Or a, you, if I am using it both in one hand, that's okay, but it's coming off the left side. The supply yarn is coming off the left. So now, because I was talking, I need to go double check that I have my pattern right. Okay. And then we're gonna take both yarns across the back for our next row. All right, I'm on row number 11, and you can see how this is coming out so far. It looks kind of Halloween-ish, really, but it is um, all going to come together and look more autumnal than Halloween. So I'm taking both of these yarns across the back of my hand, making sure I have enough slack and making sure that have everything straightened out. So again, I have three border stitches that I'm gonna go ahead and knit before I get started. So I'll do that. Awkwardly. Okay, then I'm gonna get a hold of this orange one and bring that loosely across the back also. Knit with that and carry on with my pattern as necessary. So it's just taking practice. It's just going to take some practice to get comfortable with whatever method you prefer when you're working out using one hand or two for your colors. And there is no right way. It's just whatever feels best to you. All right, my speed swatch is finished and you can see all these long floats across the back that, you know, that I just stretched across the back of my hand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of straighten these out a little bit and I'm going to trim them so they are about, oh, I don't know, inch and inch and a half, you know, I'm going to cut them right here. So that there's an inch and a half or so fringe, I guess, if you will, on each side and then I will save the rest of this to make uh, felted, maybe some felted dryer balls with or, or whatever. I have a, a little container full of, of bits and they're only 100% wool, but I do have a container of those. So I'm just gonna go along and trim this off and then my swatch will lay flat. This one, there we go. So now my swatch will lay flat and I will take care of all these fringy bit, but I'm gonna give it a bath. Now I know that, you know, some of these stitches here on the edge are a little bit loose just because of the edge, but you know what, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna trim all of this mess off the other side and then I'm gonna soak it for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna pin it out on a blocking mat and then I will measure my gauge once it's dry. Now the other thing I'll mention about all this is if you're concerned about having enough yarn, don't cut this. You can go ahead and block it and you know pin it out with all that mess on the back. And then in a pinch, I mean I know it will have already been blocked, but in a pinch you could unravel this and go ahead and use it if you totally had to. Okay, I've blocked my swatch and I've pinned it out and now I'm ready to measure my gauge. Now it's pretty easy to choose a place here that where you can see where there's, say there's you know, you know that there's two stitches of orange here, or there's three here in the middle, and then there's three more of a contrasting color. Anyway, you just want to choose somewhere where you can accurately count the number of stitches. I'm going to go ahead and take this pin out right here so I can lay this flat. And I'm going to measure in two or three or four different places just so I can get a really accurate count. And the other thing you can do is if you're sure this is entirely dry, go ahead and take the pins out and and just do this. Um, I'm just impatient and I wanna show you what I'm gonna get here for my stitch count. So I'm just gonna use this pin as a pointer and I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a little bit stitches to number one. But since I don't, since I did not land on a whole stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and count and I'm gonna find a place where I can count out to a whole stitch so I get an average rather than just guessing, well, that's seven and a half or seven and a third or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to count all the way out, however many inches that might take, until I get a whole stitch at a whole inch, even if I need to count three inches and, you know, use the ruler down here instead. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm going to have an average of seven stitches per inch. Um, so that's going to actually be a little bit larger than I had anticipated because 100% wool, it blooms once it soaks. So I will take that, go and check the pattern, and decide what size needles I'm going to use based on my finished swatch here. Okay, thanks for swatching along with me on this Fair Isle Friday. It really is beneficial to do this. You'll make sure your project's right on track, and it also gives you a sense of how the colors are gonna blend together, particularly if you're knitting from stash, and you may wanna have a chance to check it out before you invest in the whole garment, or, you know, because what if it's a big sweater instead of a hat? So swatching is definitely important. Take good notes, put them on your Ravelry page, because people like that. Show me your swatches in the Facebook group and or the Ravelry group. I'd love to see them and know what yarn you're using. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on Tuesday, May 11th for Cast On.